Let's take a look at the solutions for the second type of improper integrals. These are going to be the type of integrals where we have a vertical asymptote, and usually one of the limits will be where the vertical asymptote is, although it doesn't have to be. Um, in this particular problem, I, I actually had to change the problem. The uh, limits in this problem that were originally given didn't make sense, so we're going to evaluate the integral from 2 to 3. Um, and that will allow the square root in the in the bottom to be a real number. Um, but we'll notice here that on the left side of this interval, where we have the 2, we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So this is going to be an improper integral because that is going to be infinite on that side. So what we do is we rewrite it using a variable and allow that variable to approach 2 from the right side. And notice also that I rewrote the integrand as x minus 2 to the negative 1 half power. Uh, that's going to allow me to evaluate the antiderivative very easily using the power rule. So going down to the bottom of the screen here, we're going to evaluate that definite integral. We're going to ignore the limit for now. And we see that that, that integral is going to have the value that depends on t um, of 2 minus 2 times the square root of t minus 2. And so if we evaluate the limit as t approaches 2 from the right of that expression, we end up getting 2. Points were given on this problem for the final answer of 2. For rewriting the integral uh, as a limit with a variable in, as the lower limit, and then also for evaluating that definite integral in our limit and getting an expression that depends on this variable here. Uh, keep in mind that I chose t as my variable, but any any variable choice here would be acceptable. In the second problem, um, we're going to evaluate the integral of tangent from 0 to pi over 2. And notice here that tangent has a vertical tangent, or I'm sorry, a vertical asymptote at x equals pi over 2. So again, we have an improper integral, so we have to approach pi over 2 from the left, and we're going to use theta as our limit. I'm sorry, as our variable. Um, and so I rewrote tangent as sine over cosine, and this is going to allow me to evaluate this definite integral using substitution. Um, I'll let u equal cosine of x, so du is going to equal negative sine of x. Sorry, I forgot the negative sign there. And so what we end up with is the integral of negative 1 over u with respect to u. Now, one thing that's really important here when we use substitution, if we're going to leave this in terms of u to evaluate this integral, we need to not only change the integrand and our variable of integration, um, our differential, but we also need to change our limits. This 0 here is an x value, so if we put 0 in for x in this expression here, cosine of 0 is 1, and then our upper limit is going to be the cosine of theta putting theta in for x. So we need to change our limits, and then evaluating that integral, we get the opposite of the natural log of the absolute value of cosine of theta. So we go back to our original limit, and we evaluate the limit of this expression. Um, keep in mind that when we approach pi over 2 from the left, cosine is going to be positive. So this is really just the natural log of the cosine of pi over 2, or at least approaching the cosine of pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this term is going to approach 0 from the right, and the natural log of 0 is, or approaches, negative infinity, so we have the opposite of negative infinity, which is going to be positive infinity. Now, we don't give infinity as our answer. This is going to be an infinite area, but the way we give our answer here is that the integral diverges. So points were given for saying that the integral diverges as an answer, for rewriting the integral as a limit with a variable in the upper limit, and then also for evaluating that definite integral here. And in the third problem, we have a, an improper integral because the natural log of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So we rewrite this as a limit with a variable lower limit, replacing that 0 because 0 is not, un, not defined in this function. And so we go off to the side. Uh, this is an integral that we need to integrate by parts. And when we do that, we end up getting um, this expression here. 
And so evaluating the definite integral, we get a fairly complex um, expression, but uh, we end up getting negative 1 fourth minus a squared natural log of a over 2 plus a squared over 4. Um, you can check the math here for, for that solution. And then we rewrite the limit of that expression. And <clears throat> we have one term here that's going to go to 0. We have another term that is an indeterminate form, so we have to use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate. Using L'Hopital's rule, we get um, 0 for that second term. And so we get negative 1 fourth minus 0 plus 0, and that's going to be negative 1 fourth. This is a little bit of a tricky problem, um, but points were given here for the final answer of negative one fourth um, for rewriting the problem as a limit with a variable lower limit approaching zero from the right, and then for evaluating the definite integral from a to one.